Hey, it's Phil Ratcliffe with Herbal Financial. Thanks for tuning in again today uh, to another great live broadcast. Today we've got Frank Glover here um, to uh, help explain to us a little bit about home inspection. So thanks so much, Frank, for, for joining us today. Thank you. I appreciate you guys having me in. Awesome. So, you know, I think a lot of people know home inspectors. Right. And maybe at one point in their life when they bought or sold or whatsoever, they come in contact. But I doubt a lot of people know a lot about what you do and when they should engage you or how they should use you. Um, but before we get into that, tell us a little bit about yourself. How'd you get into home inspection and you know owning your own company? Okay, uh, Frank Lover inspect my home property inspections. Uh, actually, I, I got into home inspections. I met a home inspector and started talking with him and found out you know the skills that he had and the training that he had gone through and the experience. Mm -hmm. And I realized. I had a lot of those skills and I had a lot of those experience. I didn't have the formal schooling yet and I was looking for a business you know, that would be a great business to get into that I would enjoy doing that I already had some knowledge about. Yeah. And I decided it seemed like the perfect opportunity. Went to school, um, worked with uh, a guy that had been doing it for 25 or 30 years. He was my teacher. He's like, cool. He's kind of my mentor. I, he's on speed dial if I ever come across <laughs> anything that I haven't seen. But. It's like the old trades. You have a mentor and right. you're coming up through as an apprentice and then now you're running your own thing and right. it makes you more specialized and better at it. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, and got into business and of course, like any other thing, to get really good at it and stay good at it. Practice. Do a lot of practice. You read and learn, you know, I'm learning something, I try to learn something new every day that I haven't come across. Now is your industry, is that is that common to where there are a lot of like people that own their own businesses and are solo kind of like that or is it kind of like real estate where there are some independent people but then there's bigger companies that do it Right. like as a franchise or something like that? Uh, you know, and we have kind of a mix here in Columbus. The majority of home inspectors nationwide are probably single single person operations, okay. possibly one or two. Mm -hmm. Then you do get into some of the franchises that have Got started bigger. to to grow and come about that you see across the country. And then there's uh, guys that started out as a solo operation and they got busy and they added a couple guys and now they have five or six inspectors. So how do most people find you? Is it is it individual homeowners and what's up coming to you or is it more referral from a realtor or how does how does it work? Um, you know, I, I get kind of a mix. Yeah. Uh, I've got a lot of great Google reviews that mm -hmm. people have I've written about me. Yeah. You know, so when people are looking for a home inspector, you know, they find me online that way, they read my reviews and I, I get a lot of phone calls cool. just from that way. And yeah. then I have uh, a group of realtors that I've kind of worked with over on a regular basis. They put me on what they call their referral list. Uh -huh. and um, so It's like, hey, you need to get this done. Call right. one of these people. Yeah, yeah, you know, and there's kind of a time limitation when, you know, you're getting yeah, involved get in buying yeah. a house. So Especially you know, nowadays because they're going so fast, right? You know, everything yeah. happens fast. You put in the offer, and then most of the time you're setting up closing within 30 days. You're trying to get a home inspection yeah. set up. And then you're asking for the seller possibly to fix some Change of those things. Or, yeah. Yeah. So actually a great opportunity for me a lot of times is to try to get to meet people when they're just starting to look for a house. Yeah. So I've already had a chance to talk to them. They, mm -hmm. you know, they kind of know what the process is. And then when their offer gets accepted, they're ready to go. They give me the call. Versus when they're calling you like, I need you to do this in two days. Right. <laughs> exactly. You know, so they kind of are more familiar with the process. So it actually yeah. works out really well. Cool. And that's one thing when I was looking on your uh, website, and I was looking at frequently asked questions, and I really hadn't thought about it before. But one of the things you put on there is like, you should be there, right, when I'm doing it, because then you could tell them right there, show them. Yeah, and you know, and, you know especially first-time home buyers, you know, I can walk them through the things that I'm finding, and they also a lot of times you put an offer in a house, you only saw the house for 20 minutes. Maybe you just you, saw the aesthetics, right? Yeah. And it's yeah. like, if nothing else. While you're there, you know, you get to walk around, take a look at the house again. I've actually had people go measure for their curtains and everything while they're <laughs> there with me. Yeah. You know, and then a lot of times it's great if they don't have time to be there for the whole home inspection. We'll set up a time for them to, to come the last 30 to 45 minutes. I can do a quick recap with them, point out some things yeah. to them about the house. And a lot of people, I bet, there. don't get into the crawl spaces or think about the stuff. And if you just put it on a report, 
it's not the same thing as you like point it out and show them what you're right. talking about, right? Yeah, see, yeah. if I can point it out to them, that's great. Uh, one of the nice things about the, the software that I use when I generate the report, mm -hmm. it's, it's uh, very interactive. There's a lot of home inspectors that still kind of use very old school technology and it prints out a, a PDF report and that's great. Yeah. But the one I use, you view it online. If I see a leak, I take a three second video of the leak. Uh, when you go to look at my cool. report, you yeah. can click on it. You and can see it. the yeah. leak exactly where it's at. Um, the picture's enlarged so that you can get a better view of what yeah. you're seeing. That'd probably I'm be seeing. awesome too for people that are like maybe out of state investors and stuff like right. that because then they could actually see what, what you're talking about if right. they can't be here. Yeah, yeah and, that, and that's why I say it just it helps yeah. them a little more. That, that you know, the paper report's okay. Mm -hmm. But with the technology we have now, if that's all that you're using, you're kind of behind the times sure. with what we have available. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool. Um, so what kind of different services do you provide? I know there's a few different ones, right. even though we've kind of been talking about one type, which is yeah. just inspecting for when somebody's selling or buying. Uh, it, you know, there's kind of a variety of things. You know, our core thing is the general home inspection. Uh, but I decided... I wanted to make sure I could do it right, make it easy for my clients so they didn't have to call people. So mm -hmm. I'm actually licensed to do the radon testing. Okay. Uh, Is that standard or no? To do radon testing? Yeah. You know, nationwide, it's only about 5% of houses, but if you live in central Ohio or some of the other higher areas, we probably average around seven to eight houses out of 10 will be high in radon. Wow. You know, compared to what the EPA recommends for you to have that mitigation. Yeah. So we recommend it with pretty much every home purchase, get a radon test because there's a very good possibility that you're gonna be higher in. So how much does it normally cost to mitigate when you to buy that? To mitigate, yeah. you know, if you've got a full basement and with the sump pump system, a lot of the times the mitigation, they can do it probably for somewhere around nine fifty to a thousand dollars. Okay. But that's kind of pretty that's much your huge. easiest yeah. starting point. Yeah. Everything else gets a little more complicated if you have a partial basement with partial with a crawl space, mm -hmm. um, depending on the size of the basement, how old the house is and whether yeah. it has the drain system with the sump. Mm -hmm. um, all those things go into it and it can go, go on up, up to fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars depending yeah. on just you know what the expectations are sure. which is why you know i kind of set up myself with you know a company that they do mitigation that way i got to know them so if i refer you know one of sure. my buyers i know who i'm referring them to. sure it would be nicer if they are got a bigger economy of scale and they're right. efficient at it they can lower the cost but still make yeah. more because right. they do more volume and they're fast at yeah. it yeah uh, but then i went ahead and you know i got licensed for termite inspections mm -hmm. Technically, we call them wood destroying insects, but <laughs> when I say wood destroying insects, nobody knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, so, yeah. You, know, you know, parentheses, termite inspection, and carpenter ants, right? Yeah. Carpenter ants yeah. and things like that. Uh, and then the other inspections people don't think about a lot of times is uh, some people want to get an inspection when they put their before they list their house. Mm -hmm. That way, they get an idea of what needs to be fixed, and they can decide if they want to fix some of the stuff before they list it. Sure. Um, and you have time. And you have time. You have time. You got to fix it within a week or two. You're probably going to way pay right. pay a good bit more. Yeah, you can yeah. hire who's available versus either if it's something you could do yourself or hire somebody else. You have a little. Most more people time are to trying to it. sell like spring to summer too, right. and that's like the contractor's busy time too. Exactly. Versus you get a discount in winter. Right. You know, stuff. So yeah. it has them give some opportunities to have more solutions for the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, than time crunch. For sure. Uh, and then the last one we do uh, a lot of times. People don't think about this one, but when you buy a new house, uh -huh. almost all of them are going to have a one-year warranty on them for yeah, most yeah. of the things within the house. Mm -hmm. Well, when you get close to the end of that warranty, your building superintendent or something from the housing company is going to call up and say, hey, we want to do the walkthrough you know, for your one-year warranty. Yeah. They walk through the house, and you know, they're only going to be there 15 or 20 minutes. If you don't point it out or see it, do you think anybody else is going to point it out? Probably they don't want to not. pay extra if they don't no. have to, right? <laughs> Whereas what we do a lot of times yeah. is uh, what we call it like an 11th month new construction uh -huh. uh, warranty home inspection. That's what I've heard. New right. constructions are the main ones because like when those right. big companies that build all those homes, that they put those on there, right? Exactly. Yeah. You know, so we'll do a home inspection for, for you before your 12 month warranty is up. So you know what to point out. So we'll point out all the things. We'll do it just like we would if you were selling the house. Full-blown mm -hmm. home inspection. We actually include a few extra things that we don't do in a normal house sale, which if it's just cosmetic, yeah. then you're 
buying what we call a used house. Sure. We're not going to list those things because it's not a deficiency in the house. But if you just bought the house, it's brand new and it's already having those drywall right. nail pops yeah. and things like yeah. that. We'll also include that because they should fix it. Right, they're yeah. the things that you yeah. can probably get the builder to go ahead and fix, and why not? Sure, you know, have them do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, they could send one of their subs over there right. for like a half a day and fix everything. Yeah. Right? Now, yeah. you know, if you wait until you know after your twelve months and then start finding these things, like possibly an electrical okay. outlet, you know, yeah. in the attic or something that doesn't work because mm -hmm. nobody ever connected it, <laughs> yeah. uh, or we still find you know houses where. You know, your bathroom vent with the humidity and everything it's supposed to go outside of the house yes well sometimes they didn't connect it outside I've the house seen lots so of those just sitting in the attic, attic. yeah all right so and that's bad for your roof inside yeah. of your roof right yeah. you know so you get us to come out and do a home inspection mm -hmm. for you we present all that stuff to the builder you get them to fix it before yeah. you know say you go to sell the house two or three years down the road it's a lot better and all, all well you don't get a home inspection yeah and all of a sudden the home inspector finds all these things that could have been fixed while it was under warranty. Free of charge. Free of now charge. you got to pay for it. Now them. you're paying for them. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So, um, what is, I saw on your website that you're uh, a member of InterNACHI. I guess Inter that's the sh short of it. What is that? You know, why is it important? Okay. Do all home inspectors do that? Or is it just the ones that are trying to more standardize things? Uh, InterNACHI is an internationally international association of home inspectors. Uh -huh. it, it's our certification okay. organization. Um, not You're not required to join one, mm -hmm. uh, but most of us that are truly in this professionally for you know a, a business and to make profession it a profession, yeah, are, are involved in one of the, the two organizations in Nernachi. The reason I will join them is they have a great uh, set of resources as far as continuing education, uh -huh. which for home inspectors every year the. Uh, they come out with new construction standards and new sure. electrician electrical standards, you know. So you try to keep up with all those things, and InterNACHI, you know, provides online videos. Well, I've got that big National Association of Fire Prevention where the right. code comes from, and it's like huge. I'm sure someone like that could help you really pare it down to the most important things that right. actually changed. Right? Yeah, and that's yeah. what InterNACHI does is they yeah. they provide a lot of that continuing education, you know, and that's one of the things you you've always got to be learning new stuff in this business because. Even a lot of the deficiencies that we see now mm -hmm. are because of changes in the codes over the years and what was okay and safe, they thought, in a house in 1970 or 1980. Yeah. Now they realized after several houses burned down that that's not safe. Yeah. We need to change the way, so that's what we inspect for. That's one thing I, I was, when I got into a lot of stuff that I was surprised at because you, you think you could just go look up the building code from the city or the state and right. they have stuff. But it's basically just adding on to the code that that private organization does, right. and you have to pay them <laughs> to get like what the code is or what's yeah, And I was safe. really surprised yes. and how big it really is. The, the right. state is just layering on top of that. Yeah. So you don't think it's that big when you go through theirs. Yeah, and that's yeah. one of the things you know for a home inspector. You know, we'll, we'll be honest. We're you know we're not experts on the fine details of huge. You know, certain things. Yeah. Which is why a home inspector. You're paying us, we are a, a trend generalist with a huge amount of knowledge mm -hmm. about the entire house. Yeah. You could hire somebody to come in for the HVAC, for the electrical, for, for sure. the plumbing, and pay a thousand or two thousand dollars for these inspections by the time you it's get done. It's gotta be a balance between right. cost and right. So we find the things and then there there are times that we refer on our report that you really should have a uh, electrical contractor because this needs to be evaluated and repaired yeah. because it's not some correct. Big house or building as a boiler, I'm right. sure that would be hard to evaluate. Yeah. <laughs> like it, right? So, you know, we, we know that it's wrong. Uh, we know that, you know, it needs to be corrected. Mm -hmm. And they come in with the current code and correct it to the current code. Gotcha. Okay. So, you know, what maybe is some of the common, more serious things that you come in contact with just to give people a practical, almost story? Right. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we always find, you know, there's a lot of just normal things that we see in houses, but the ones that are always a little more concerning are, you know, large foundation cracks, um, um, you know, possibly the foundation wall leaning in a little bit, Yeah. you know, because those are, are structural things that you need to have somebody actually come out and evaluate the cost of correcting it, which is why sometimes if you go in and you're looking at houses, you'll see these steel beams against the basement walls and that's actually a good thing yeah because that means they've already Shorting had somebody up. come yeah. in and strengthen those walls 
Um, so turn something from something possibly structural and right. and catastrophic into something now that's just yeah, cosmetic. It's, or, it's cosmetic. It's already yeah. been fixed. Yeah, you've got the steel beams yeah. there, but now you know the basement walls have been secured. You know, the other things that people just don't think about is just water damage in general. Yeah. You know, water can do a lot of damage to a house if you let it go. Things from, you know, your, your drains not being, you know, correctly draining the water away from the house. Mm -hmm. The ones I love are... You, know, you have a sump pump draining water out from underneath your house. Well, then people won't fix their gutter or downspout. So when it rains, it drains it's down next to the foundation. Yeah. The sump pump pumps it back out. And if the sump pump pipe isn't correct, it drains it right back down next to the foundation. So, <laughs> so it's, it's accentuating the problem because the water just keeps problem. running. Yeah. So, yeah. and then the, the other one would be people don't go up in their attic very often. Sure. You know, so you can have leaks and things up in your attic. And if it's not a fast leak, the insulation will absorb a lot of that water before it ever comes through the drywall. Yeah. But then you have this dark, moist condition up in your attic. So, you know, you can have mold, uh, you can have yeah, other damage that's, that's happening. Lose your insulation. Mm. Right. But nobody sees it. Yeah. You know? So those are the kind of the, you know, those un unseen things a lot of times. Um, but water comes back to a lot of things that we that we see. <laughs> I bet that is half of the stuff that people miss for a long period of time. Is they don't want to get in the crawl space. Right. They don't want to go into the attic if it doesn't have a floor. Right. And then if it does have a floor, maybe you don't know what's underneath the floor. Right. In between the drywall and the floor. Yeah. Or what, so. Because I'll be honest, most home inspectors tell you, we don't like going in crawl spaces either. <laughs> <laughs> but somebody's got to do it, right? It's, it's yeah. part of what we do. But, yeah. you know, if I had a choice between inspecting a house with a full basement <laughs> or a crawl space, yeah. I'm going to take the one with the basement sure. every day of the week. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, you know, kind of wrapping up here, you know, what's your best piece of advice that you can kind of leave our audience, viewers, even into the future, about what you do, what's important, et cetera? Uh, you know, a couple things. Current homeowners, that maintenance that you that you never make time to do, trust me, it's worth the, the time investment, yeah. you know, doing it. Uh, for people that, you know, are, are looking at purchasing a house, never waive the home inspection as part of the negotiation thing even if you're buying a house as is yeah get the home inspection so you know what exactly what you're you're getting into mm -hmm. um it's it's one of those things that's just a huge importance to be is that, is mainly the seller pay for the home inspection or does uh, the, the buyer, buyer always pay for the home inspection and, and, and if there the, was one done that like a deal that fell through should, can they use that or should they have their own redone they should have they should still have their own redone um yeah. The home inspection that was previously done, mm -hmm. all of our home inspections are, are good that day. Yeah. But things change, and sure. you know, if it's three weeks later, there could have been something new that happened. It's never worth relying upon that old information. Gotcha. You know, and that's what sometimes people don't realize. But yeah, I said getting that. I said getting the home inspection, and even if you don't make it to the home inspection, if you can attend like the last thirty minutes. Almost every home inspector is more than happy to do a quick recap. Of How long does it usually take for you to um, do? I mean, average, obviously, your houses average, are bigger than others. I usually plan somewhere between three and four hours on wow. just a normal size yeah. house. I say I want to make sure I'm hitting all the all the aspects that I need to hit. Uh, you know, if it's a bigger house, it's definitely going to take longer. Mm -hmm. Funny thing is, some people think that a smaller house shouldn't take us as long. Well, sometimes a smaller stuff. house yeah. can actually have more deficiencies than a big house huh. you never know sometimes sure. they're faster and sometimes they're not yeah well you can check out frank's website um it's imhohio.com you got a lot of good things on there i liked um in your inspections you had your services but below that you had that internachi list of like right. all the things you go down and it's kind of impressive in terms yeah. of all the things that's checking off and you guys can see that and I think you got a link onto there to where you've got those testimonials you were talking about right. or what so. Well, thanks so much for being here today, Frank. Yeah. I think that's awesome for people to learn more about it, that maybe it's been a long time or they've never done it before to understand the importance of it. And, you know, I personally, I told you, I like to do a lot of stuff with my own house and what right. so. So I feel like I have an intimate relationship yeah. with how everything is and how it's built. And I very much appreciate that. But most homeowners don't have that. And yeah, you yeah. just showing them right. will give them a little bit of that. And to me, that's really important to know that your electrical's good or that, yeah. this, you know, or whatever the case. Um, so thank you guys for spending a part of your day with us again. If you ever have any questions, reach out to us. Reach out to Frank. Uh, we put his information up uh, periodically as you're watching, so you have it. There'll be some uh, 
uh, post below where you can get the information. Uh, join us next week. We've got Susie Vincent in, and Tony's going to be doing that one. I'm going to be doing some fun uh, uh, spring break stuff with my kids. Um, and they're going to be talking about branding your company. And the week after that, we have Elaine uh, Ewer, who's a cancer survivor and started her own nonprofit, uh, Helping Hands in the Garden, helping other uh, people going through cancer treatment, uh, fixing up their home. So should be both great shows. Hopefully, uh, sooner or later, spring will actually be here and you can enjoy it. Uh, but again, if there's any way we can help you, let us know and have a super finish of the week.